Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve word ladder. This is a hard problem, but I don't think it's super difficult. There's just one little thing that kind of makes it really annoying to get this to pass on leak code. But the idea is we're given a beginning word and we're given an end word and we're given a list of words. We want to create a sequence from this beginning word to the end word. And the end word is definitely going to be need to be a part of our word list, but the beginning word actually might not be a part of the word list. And so we want to create a sequence from the beginning word to the end word. That sounds pretty easy, but there's one restriction that we have to follow. And that restriction mainly is that every adjacent pair of words in that sequence can only differ by a single character, exactly one character. They have to differ by exactly one character. And so we want to find a sequence from that beginning word to the end word where every word in between is a part of the word list. And we want to return the shortest sequence. So the sequence will basically be the number of words. So for example, in uh, this example down here, we can see that there's, there's a sequence from the starting word hit. And notice how this is the beginning word. So it doesn't have to be a part of our list of words. But every other word in the sequence does have to be a part of the list of words. And that includes the end word. So cog does have to be a part of our list of words. And so in this example, the shortest sequence is of length five because it has five different words in it. Now, the convenient thing for us is that every single word, including the beginning, end word, and every word in the list is going to be guaranteed to be the exact same length. In this case, every word has three characters in it. So it's it's pretty easy to take two words and figure out what's the the difference in characters between them, right? We can just compare character by character and see that there's one character difference. Therefore, we could form a path between these two words, right? And each edge between these words, let's say log and cog, is going to be bi-directional, right? We could go from log to cog or we could go the other direction, right? So this is starting to look like a bit of a graph problem, right? We want to we want to find the shortest path from the beginning node hit all the way to the end node cog and the the way the edges are going to work, so hit could be connected to any of the words in this word list where it has a single character difference. So let's think about this. So hit, which one of these words could it be connected to? Is there a single character difference between hit and hot? Yes, that's the case. So hit and hot are going to be connected in this problem. What about dot? Nope, it takes two character difference between hit. What about dog? Again, two character difference. Lot, again, two character difference. Same with log and same with cog. But hot could be connected to some of these characters or some of these words, right? So we're realizing that building a graph like this with all the edges, like an adjacency list pretty much between the words is gonna be very helpful for us. And there's a naive way to create this adjacency list which is going to basically be a nested loop on the entire list of words, which let's say ends up being n squared, where n is the number of words. And let's say the length of each word, which is always going to be the same, is m, because we're going to need to compare character by character between the words. So creating that adjacency list is going to be something like n squared times m. But, and you might think that that's good enough, unfortunately, this won't pass on leak code. And I really think that's kind of stupid that it does that. The main thing to notice to build the adjacency list faster is to look at the constraints. They tell us that the length of the, of the list of words, in our case, that's n, so it's going to be n squared, right, is going to be less than or equal to 5,000, whereas the length of the word itself is going to be less than or equal to 10. So there's actually a way where we can change this time complexity to at least generate that adjacency list to something like n times m squared, because the m is going to be smaller than the n. So we can actually make it kind of like this, but I'm pretty sure that the overall time complexity, because after we actually create this graph, we are going to run a breadth first search algorithm to find the shortest path. We could do it with DFS, but usually to find the shortest path, breadth first search is much more efficient. And I'm pretty sure even in this case, the breadth first search solution is going to be n squared because this is going to be the number of edges we could potentially have, right? Because that's how many words we have. We could have n squared edges and and we're also going to have to compare words. So 
on each operation when we're traversing the graph, it's going to be multiplied by the length of the word. So the overall time complexity for the BFS is still going to be n squared, which is, you know, pretty much this. So you might think, well, then why isn't it passing on leak code? And, you know, that's a good question. I think in general, though, doing it like this is going to be faster. We use this to generate our adjacency list, and then we do a BFS with this time complexity. And basically, there's kind of a small trick that I'm going to show you, which will get it to pass on leak code. So like I said, the first part is building an adjacency list and the naive way would be to go through every word hot, compare it with every other word, that's gonna be n squared, and then the length of the word, which is m, but there's a little bit of a trick. So how about we we do it some a different way, right? We know that for any word, we want at most one character difference, right? So let's take a look at hot, our first word, and let's take a look at every pattern it could fall into if we changed one character at most. If we changed the first character to any other character, we could transform this into star for the wild card and then O T, right? We change the first character. We could also transform it into H, change the middle character, star, and then T, right? And then also to a third word, H-O, and the last character is going to be a star, right? So these are the three patterns that hot fits into. And now let's take a look at a different word, dot. And let's quickly do the same thing for this. So the first pattern will be uh, star O-T, next D star T, lastly D O star. So notice how, okay, these two patterns between the words are different. These two patterns between the words are different, but the first pattern for each word is the exact same. Since these both, both of these words, hot and dot have the same pattern uh, when we remove the first character, that means that they have a one character difference between these words. And that makes sense, right? If we change the first character from here to a D or change the first character from here to an H, these two words will be the same. That means they have a one character difference. So using this idea, we are gonna create an adjacency list where the where the key of the adjacency list is going to be the pattern. By pattern, I mean one of these wildcard type strings and the value of this adjacency list. And in our case, it's gonna be a hash map or a dictionary. So each pattern is going to be mapped to a list of words. So each pattern to a list of words. So for example, if we take the pattern star O T, we'll have a corresponding list of words for all words that fit this pattern, right? We, so far we found hot fits this pattern. We also found that dot fits this pattern. And by just looking at our list, we can see that lot is also going to fit this pattern. So we have three words that fit this pattern. So if we wanted all the neighbors of hot in our adjacency list, how would we find them, right? Because the key, we're not, it's not, it's not like hot is the key of this adjacency list. So to find all the neighbors of hot, what we have to do is first for, for hot, find all of its patterns, right? The first pattern star OT will go to that star and say, okay, these are all the neighbors of hot. These are all the neighbors in the graph. Of course, we can't include itself. So we'd say, okay, dot and lot are going to be the neighbors of hot. But we also know that hot could have a couple other patterns that it fits into. So H star T. Are there any other words in our list that match this pattern? Well, hit is going to match that, right? Hit is going to match the pattern H star T. So in that list, we would have hot and hit. So that's how we'd get another neighbor for hot. And lastly, we'd see, are there any other words that fit this pattern, H, O, star? In our list, you can tell that I don't think any other words are going to fit that pattern. Only hot itself fits that pattern, so it doesn't have any additional neighbors. So the all the neighbors of hot are going to be dot, lot, and hit from up above here. And so how are we finding the neighbors? So basically, what's the computation of what I just did? It's it's going to be, since to find all the neighbors, we're going to have to go from hot, consider, okay, if we remove this character, or remove this character, or remove this character. So basically, we're going through every word in our list, which is N, and then we're going through every single character that we remove, which is M, 
right? So that's how many possible different patterns we could have in total. And then to actually add each word to the list is going to be another M. So that's kind of how you can get the complexity N times M squared to at least generate the adjacency list. Now let's assume we have that adjacency list and we have a graph, then the algorithm is actually pretty straightforward. It's just gonna be a basic BFS search. So this is something like how our graph is gonna look like. We know that the beginning word is hit, the destination word, the end word is cog. So we wanna find the shortest path from here all the way to here. So we know that a good way to find sh a shortest path is a BFS search. So from our first initial spot, we're gonna look at all neighbors that it has. From the picture, it's pretty obvious. Hot is the only neighbor. So, so far we have a path of length two because we're counting the number of words. That is what determines the length of the path. And of course, it's not gonna be this simple to get the neighbors because we know that our adjacency list is a little bit more complicated. And again, from hot, we're gonna go to its two neighbors and we're never gonna revisit the same neighbor twice, but we are gonna potentially have to go along each edge at least once. We're also not gonna go along the same edge twice, but the number of edges I'm pretty sure could be the number of words N squared. And for each neighbor, to find each neighbor, we're gonna have to do an M operation where M is the length of a, of a particular word, is which is where I'm getting this time complexity N squared times M. I'm pretty sure leak code has the wrong time complexity for this. Uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong though. Because for a graph with n nodes, the maximum number of edges could be n squared. And again, from here, so we don't wanna, even though there's an edge between these two nodes, we don't wanna go along that edge because that's gonna be revisiting the same nodes twice. So now we're gonna go along our next layer. So from dot, we can reach dog, and from lot, we can reach log. One Now there's just one last unvisited node. Both of these log could visit it or dog could visit it, but at the end, we're gonna have a single another node. So what was the path? So we had one word, two word, three, four, five. It took us five layers of our BFS to reach this. So we're gonna say that our result is five. And when you look at the output, that's exactly what they had as well. So with that being said, we can jump into the code now. So now let's get into the code. And like I mentioned, we wanna make sure that the end word is actually in the word list because that's a requirement. If it's not, then we have to return zero because that's what we wanna return if there doesn't exist a path from the beginning word to the end word. We're gonna have a list of neighbors. This is gonna be our adjacency list. And this is the first time I'm actually gonna do collections.default dict. I usually avoid doing this. I actually manually create the dictionary, but in this case, it's gonna be helpful to do this. Basically, this is a dictionary where we, if, you're, if we're inserting a new value for the first time, the default value is going to be an empty list. Also to our word list, I'm gonna go ahead and append the beginning word because it's not a part of the word list initially. So begin word. Now let's actually build the adjacency list. So first let's go through every single word in this word list. And now for each word, we wanna find every possible pattern for this word. So I'm gonna use a pointer J just to go through every single position of this word. Of course, we know every word is gonna be the exact same length. And for each position of this word, I wanna replace a character with the wildcard character. So I'm gonna transform this string word into a pattern string where we're gonna take the first uh, J characters. Initially, J is just gonna be zero. So we're gonna take that. We're gonna replace the jth character, the zeroth character with a star. And then we're gonna get the remaining characters skipping the jth character. So J plus one to the end of the string. So we're just gonna go through every position, replacing a character with the star. And then for this pattern, we're gonna say, okay, in our neighbor list, the all the, the strings that fall into this pattern. So for this pattern, we wanna append the current word. We wanna say this word is a part of this pattern and that's gonna help us traverse the graph like later on. And of course, we're gonna do that for every single word in the entire uh, list. And we're gonna do it, we're gonna have that star go in every position of the word. Next, let's do our BFS. There's a couple data structures we're gonna need. We don't wanna revisit the same position twice. So we're gonna have a set to make sure we don't do that. We know we're gonna start at the beginning word. So let's add beginning word to the set. And we also need a queue. And we're gonna 
similarly add the beginning word to this queue and we're just going to continue popping we're going to go layer by layer until we get to the end word and initially our result or our length of the path is going to be one because we have at least one word the length is going to be the number of words along the path and now we're going to continue going while the queue is non-empty if we find the word we're going to end up returning the result if we don't find the word when the loop exits we're going to end up returning zero so let's do that and so we wanna go through the entire layer and then we want to uh, increment our result by one. So I'm gonna increment result by one after we go through the entire layer and then we're gonna continue going layer by layer until our queue happens to be empty. So let's go through whatever the length of the queue currently is. Let's go through every single uh, node and pop that node. So queue.pop left and when we pop we're going to be getting a word that we ended up adding if this word equals the end word then we can return the length of the path aka the result if it's not the end word then we're going to go ahead and take the neighbors of this word and add them to the queue how can we get the neighbors of this word well first we have to see all the patterns that this word falls into and then we have to get all the other words that fall into the exact same pattern because that's the most efficient way to get the neighbors so first let's go through for every j in range of the length of this word so that we can replace each character with the wildcard character. So let's transform this word into the pattern. So basically the exact same thing that we just did up above, I'll literally just copy and paste it. So this word could be replaced with the pattern, right? And now using this pattern, we can get all the neighbors of this word. So let's go through for neighbor word in neighbors of this pattern. Now, of course, we might be able to get that same word, but the reason we're not gonna get the same word is we're gonna check if this neighbor word is not visited. So if neighbor word not in visit, that's when we're gonna be uh, processing that word. So we definitely won't be looking at the same word twice. So if this neighbor word has not been visited, we can of course add it to visit and we can add it to the queue. So queue.append neighbor word. Uh, for some reason up above, I said if end word is in the word list, I meant to say if it's not in the word list, in that case, we're going to return zero. But other than that, the code is correct. You can see that it's pretty efficient. That's because we kind of use this trick to find the adjacency list. I feel like this shouldn't be required to pass this problem, though. I think that's kind of dumb on leak codes part but for some reason it is. But once you kind of know that trick, this problem basically just reduces to a breath first search. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot.